probably one of the most difficult areas for people to deal with on these little tractors. Some struggles they have are in the loader connections, the hydraulic connections. Um, there's just a lot of challenges we face. Ken, I thought maybe you'd be able to help us with some of the questions that we get on we'll, a, on we'll a try. frequent basis. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. First one that, that I get on comments a lot, and uh, I think we've seen on the forums as well, is um, my loader will, will perhaps pick up all the way, but it won't lower very easily, you know, or maybe it'll only raise about a foot, and then it right. doesn't seem to raise. And it worked yesterday, right. but it doesn't work today. What, what's, right. what's Most of the time, and I say that most of the time because it's, li it's literally like 90% of the time, one of these couplers has become just slightly uncoupled, whether you're working in the yard and you hit a stick on it, comes up and pops that little that little ring back, or even climbing on like this machine right here, climbing up here, your foot could hit that. And that most of the time, that will cause all your problems. And people say, well, I looked at them, they look fine. You can't look at them. You have to, you have to take this apart, clean it, stick a rag in there. Uh, WD-40 works great as a cleaner because it's got solvents in it. It's a terrible lubricant, but it works great as a cleaner. Clean that out. Make sure there's no debris on it, and couple it back together. Do that with all four couplers. All four, yeah, because you don't know which one it is. Um, so most of the time, that'll fix my loader won't XXX, whatever. Yeah, and it was working <laughs> yesterday, and it'll yes. do one function, but not another. Yep. That's usually what yeah. that problem is. OK, next question, Ken. My loader, I'm ready to take it off, and I have trouble disconnecting these, okay. or I'm trying to connect them up. I'm right. trying to put right. my loader on right. and I and push as hard as I can and can't. I can't get these things to go in. Get this question all the time. Yes. What, what do we do? We have pressure in the lines, either in the lines, either on the loader side or on the tractor side. The tractor side is very easy to fix. Turn the tractor off, okay. wiggle the joystick all four directions. That will allow any pressure that's built in the lines to go back to the tank. If it's your third function valve you're having problems with, you will need to turn the key on, but not start the tractor, yeah. and operate the third function. You hear the relay clicking, and this goes for the John Deere third function, um, a summit diverter, an artillion diverter, the summit rear hydraulic kit like this machine has, because any of that can hold pressure. But you have to remember, you have to power the valve on to be able to cycle it, and that's, that's the thing people forget is they have to have the key on, it has to have power to be able to do that. That's a good point. And we did just get this question this week, uh, both of us did actually, yes. separately about the Summit uh, hydraulic kit for the rear of this tractor. You, you, can, you can relieve the tractor side always by toggling the valves, either the electric valves or, or, or the, the joystick. Yes. Okay, Ken, but what about the loader side? So I'm, I'm driving into my loader, I've, um, I'm ready to hook it up, I've already run the joystick back and forth, but right. I still can't get to play right. in. So there's pressure built up in the lines, and okay. there's no easy way to relieve that. Um, it quite often happens when there's a huge temperature change. When you're yeah. taking the loader off, yeah. you know, it's a cold, cool morning, you take your loader off and go to put it back on later after it's sitting in the sun. You know, the hoses are black, they get hot, the pressure builds up, and it takes very little pressure in here to make this almost impossible to connect. Uh, unless you're a superman. So what happens is, so on the tip of these couplers is what's called a poppet. Okay. And that poppet. So I is, just need to take a big sledgehammer and whack well, that. Well, you don't want to do that with a sledgehammer. You can, if you, you can do that. You can wrap a rag on this and have leather gloves on and have eye protection. And I'm not being the safety police about that, but high pressure hydraulic oil can get injected into your skin and cause gangrene relatively quickly, and you can lose a digit. And it's, look it up online if you want to see very nasty pictures of that. Leather gloves, a rag, you can do that. You can push it onto the loader frame and try to relieve that. There's got to be a better way. In the worst case, that won't even work. You have to take two wrenches, which is you know, very inconvenient. You have to walk back to the barn or whatever. So there's a tool that we sell on our website yeah. called the Weight Hydraulic Tool. This was invented by a man named George Waite years ago. And this is specific to 
the style coupler you have. In this case, it's a quarter inch ISO 5675. And the way this works is the tool slides onto the groove of the coupler and clamps on just like pliers, and it's holding right. the coupler. And then you aim it right off. at me. Right, and then it has an opening there, okay? Yeah. Now we'll take this opening and we'll direct it away from us to the ground or into a... So the a, back side of it's all covered. Yeah, this is all covered. The oil can't come back at us this way. Yeah. So our hands are protected as long as we're holding this away from us. So we can hold that into a, a container. And then what we're gonna do, we're not gonna watch it because we don't wanna do that. We're gonna turn this and you will feel and often hear yeah. the, the pressure release. It'll be a little spurt of fluid that'll pop out of there. And just doing that once, you turn that, you don't need to crank this down. You just do that once and take this off and it'll plug right in. Yeah, it's amazing time. how little fluid oftentimes comes out of it. It's, it's not much it's pressure. It's just a drop, but it seems like a lot the way it's, it spurts out of there. Um, now the downside is the tool is a mess. It's full of oil. So a great way to store these is a coffee can or a jar with some cat litter in the oh, bottom really? and just stick it in there and let okay. it drain for next time. Okay. Yep, yep. Just a lot of people store their grease guns that way, you know, you know, in some kind of a can. So because every grease gun that I've ever had yep. was <laughs> leaks. Good point. Okay, so this uh, this one is specifically made for, the, for this quarter inch coupler. Yes. Um, if we have other coupler sizes, we have to get a different tool. Yes, there's not a universal tool here. And unfortunately, there's nothing for the female side. Yeah. So what we found with the attachments that go on the front, there's quite often a male and a female right. coupler um, because that's the way John Deere sets up their third function kits on the front. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the other aftermarket companies have followed suit on that. So you can't, we don't have a tool. There is not a tool made for the female side. But quite often what we found is if you relieve the pressure on the male side, the female's in relieved. The female, the piston in the cylinder will move just enough to relieve, relieve the pressure, relieve the pressure on the female side. Okay, so you sell this for the quarter inch? Yes. And? Uh, we sell six different styles right now. For the most tractors, um, the John Deere's, um, and the, most of the other tractors, I, I, there's several different couplers, but most of them will use the quarter inch ISO and the half inch ISO. Okay. But we do sell a 3 8 ISO, a 7241B in 3 8 and we even sell some flat face styles up to 3 quarter inch flat face for the skid steers, the high flow circuits on the skid steers. Okay. This has removed a lot of frustration for me. I mean, I, it just becomes very frustrating when you can't get those to plug in. Yeah. It seems like they ought to just go right it in there. It seems like they ought to go in, and, it's, and, and on some of the machines, the access to get to the couplers, to get good leverage, to push them in is just almost impossible. So pressure or not, it's difficult as it is. When you add pressure to it, it's just even, it's okay. just even worse. So just do both sides. Run yes. your joystick or your other electronic yes. control and use the weight tool on this side and they should go right yes. in. Now, yes. one other thing I have seen, because I'm not as clean as you can, okay. uh, is that sometimes these sleeves, I get dust back here and they they don't freely slide back yes closed. yes and so what i found is that i can actually wash in there with a pressure washer sometimes right um and that's really about the only way i figured right. out how to get those to work smoothly um my suggestion is wd-40 okay i hate wd-40 as a lubricant like everybody does but it's a great solvent and a great cleaner it works great it, it will break down the hydraulic oil and the dust that that is attracted to the hydraulic oil that's in there you know, especially when you're mowing, there's so much dust, it's all attracted to that hydraulic oil that's, on, that's inevitably on the couplers. You can't solve that. So the WD-40 is a great solvent to clean that out. It lubricates the balls just a little bit. And uh, that, that's what I would recommend. I would not use a pressure washer with high pressure water because you can force water into the hydraulic system that way. Okay. I want to take just a moment to tell you about Simply Safe and our results with it. We installed our Simply Safe system a couple of years ago. Christy actually installed it in less than an hour. It's a simple to set up, it's wireless, just plug it in, very brief setup and it works. We have sensors on the doors, we have temperature sensors, we've installed a bunch of high definition cameras. We like to have that remote view of our property just to make sure everything's okay. To that end, I want to show you the app today, the app that comes on my 
track your time with Tim Phone. I start the Simply Safe app, and it at, right at the top it tells me uh, whether the system's armed or not, what state it's in. We can change that. Today, though, I want to show you a different reason for using this Simply Safe app. While Ken's here, once in a while off camera, something might happen that, yeah, he might be a little bit embarrassed about. So I wanted to make sure that I went back to this afternoon and grabbed this motion. It says camera motion detected at 3.53 p.m. I can select that. I can tell it that I want to share that. And now I'm sharing it with you and the whole world, right? I got Ken on the VIN track. He thinks he's the master at every machine, right? So he gets out there and driving. And meanwhile, I saw him having some difficulties, so I kind of hid behind the loader thinking he might hit me, sort of teasing. And as soon as I said something, I looked up and he ran right into my grapple. Is it that difficult to steer, Ken? I mean, it's got a steering, I, it, it can't be that hard. But the point here is that with Simply Safe, I'm able to capture that kind of an event. I've got a good view of him, even though obviously we didn't plan for that. But with our cameras, we're able to capture fun incidents like this, as well as see incidents that might be less fun and more nefarious. So the app to me is one of the best reasons for Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash TTWT to get your system today. Okay, next question. I've connected up my couplers. I take my tractor into my nice concrete floor and it drips right down here yep. on the floor yes. while it's connected. While it's connected is a fairly simple problem to solve. In the female couplers, we're gonna use a, a half inch here just to so maybe more visible. There's an O-ring that runs around the circumference there of the, of the coupler. And that O-ring does the seal and while the coupler is coupled, it, it, it connects, it, it seals, seals right on the tip of this coupler. And that, so while it's connected, that's what's sealing. Now it's obviously different sizes there, but um, so we can replace that O-ring. They get nicked up. There's some dirt in there and we, we jam a mail in there and it, it cuts the O-ring or it, it puts a scar on the O-ring and hydraulic fluid under 2,000 pounds of pressure will find its way out. So we can take an O-ring pick, we can pull that O-ring out and we can replace it. We can buy them on um, pretty much anywhere. John Deere actually sells them as a part number, but they're crazy expensive. You can buy a pack of them. We hope to be offering them on the website in the future, maybe a five pack or a four pack since there's four. But because it's a common problem and O-rings are cheap, the only thing in hydraulics that are cheap are O-rings and advice, right? Everything else is crazy expensive, <laughs> right? So for a quarter inch coupler like these, the quarter inch ISO 5675, it's a, it's a number 113 O-ring. If, if you Google O-ring charts, Okay. Just Google 113 O-ring, and it'll have a, an ID, inside diameter, an OD, outside diameter, and there'll be different types. They'll, they'll be made of different materials. There's nitrile, there's, there's, there's different compounds of rubber. Generally, these are BUNA N, B-U-N-A, dash N is the compound these are made out of, and then there's a hardness measurement. It's called a durometer. It's how hard or dense the rubber okay. is. These O-rings are 70A durometer. So okay. 70A, Buna N, number 113, 113 for a quarter inch coupler. For a half inch coupler like this, it's a 117 O-ring, 117. Okay. And you can buy a pack off of Amazon, you can buy a 100 pack for a couple dollars. Okay. Not that you'll ever use a 100. Okay, so that's if it's leaking while it's connected. While it's connected, now, only while it's connected. But what if it's leaking while it's disconnected on either side, right? So mm -hmm. we might be leaking out of the female coupler, we might right. be leaking out of the male coupler right. while they're disconnected. If they're disconnected, your only viable option is to replace the coupler. Okay. There are O-rings behind these little poppets. It's the same poppet there, you know, on the male as it is down inside the female. There's an O-ring back there that is just, you can't get to it. Um, you need a special tool to disassemble the, the, the inner workings of the connector from the rear, and, yeah. and that's proprietary to Safeway, Pioneer, whoever makes the coupler. So we don't have a way of fixing that. Yeah. So Well, the male couplers are, are inexpensive. The male couplers are inexpensive. 
The female couplers are about twice as much, usually about $20, $18-$20. They're a lot harder to change, obviously, because, you know, like on a one series, they're held in this bracket with a circlip, and you have to get under there and disconnect a hard line, but, but that's unfortunately the only viable option other than putting a box of cat litter or a drain now, pan. Where should I try to get these couplers, either the male or female, if, if I need to replace them? Is this something I get aftermarket? Um, the aftermarket does not really have these um, because of the thread configuration. Okay. Particularly the females have a specific groove around them okay. for the circlip that retains it in this bracket. So the best place to get it is greenpartstore.com. Okay. Use code TTWT for free, free shipping. shipping. That would be great. Yep. So in this case, we probably need to go to the manufacturer. Um, that makes, that makes perfect case, sense. In this case, yeah, the aftermarket doesn't really have the exact replacements. Now, if you've got a third-party attachment that connects into these or rear SCVs or your third function, right. um, the threads might be different. Uh, but if you're working with the loader or, in this, this case, the tractor couplers, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Another question that we get, Ken, and, and, and a concern, really, that our viewers have is when they disconnect these or when they connect them up, they'll get oil. And yes. there'll be oil spew out on the floor, yes. and, and it, I mean, is this a problem? I, they're just concerned about it, right? right. I mean, you're, you, you feel like you're seeing blood. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, you're seeing the, exactly. the, and a little bit looks like a lot, right? Yeah. Just like yeah, blood. So, I mean, so, uh, yeah, it's normal with ISO couplers to spill what seems like a lot of fluid when you change them out. And unfortunately, it's very normal. And the, the, the reservoir on these, the tank, the you know, holds gallons of oil. Yeah, you four, know? four or more gallons. Four yeah. or more gallons of oil. And the level is not critical because, number one, as the fluid heats up, it gets, you know, it fills up a little bit more. But number two, depending on which way our loader is positioned, which way the piston is in or out, you know, that fluid changes all the time. And that's why we have such a large reservoir, reservoir yeah. because the level changes constantly as we use the machine you would have to change these couplers or unplug these couplers probably a thousand times before you would notice in your sight class or on your dipstick that you need to add some fluid. Okay, so, so it's, yeah. not, it's not, we don't have to have a critical level. I mean, it's not, we have to be really precise. And, right. and, but there is a dipstick, at least on the One Series and, and the BX, right. these other small tractors, and it right. shows add or, or normal. Right. And as long as you're in that range, it, it's, it's going to be fine. Yeah, and, and generally they'll tell you in the manual how to check it. On the John Deere's, it's, if you have the loader attached, it's the loader on the ground at rest and the rock shaft fully lowered because that's going to put less oil in the piston and more oil in the reservoir. You raise your rock shaft up, your three-point hitch, and go look at that reservoir or the sight glass or the dipstick, you're gonna think you're low on fluid. And if you fill it up, when you go to use a tractor next time, you run the risk of overfilling everything and having a huge mess. I'm gonna temper that a little bit. There is a lot of, of flexibility there. And I think that's the, the main point yes. is, is that yes. we can spill a little bit, it's not a big deal. Right. We can get it a little overfilled, it's not a big deal. That's correct. Um, Sometimes I try to check the oil level in my hydraulics. It's a little bit hard to see there on yeah. the dipstick. Um, on the dipsticks, it's very hard to see, and quite often in the sight glasses, it's hard to see. Yeah. Especially when you overfill it, you, you think it's not there yet, yeah. but it, it's way over. So um, John Deere actually sells a die that costs about $7 maybe, and it's a, it's a small couple ounce bottle, and you dump that die in your hydraulic reservoir run the tractor, and it turns your fluid red. Okay. Makes it super easy to see on the dipstick. Um, the high guard fluid that John Deere uses, the super UDT fluid that, super D UDT2 <laughs> fluid that Kubota uses, it's very clear. It's, it's, it's you know, that color is hard to see. Yeah. Um, so, and the fluid, the dye won't hurt the system. It won't, you know, you can use it in your Kubota, in your New Holland, in your whatever. Um, it works great. It, it's, okay. it's inexpensive, you know, when you consider the cost of hydraulic fluid. I haven't used it, but Ken's been using it for years, and he, and he yes. loves it. Yes. So uh, greenpartstore.com slash TTWT, that'll be there, and we'll also put a link to it in the description. Good idea, yeah, Ken. Great. Yep. Excellent. Uh, and, and in general, I want to I talk a little about oil leaks uh, myself from what I've, from what I've heard. Uh, from viewers, when they see an oil leak on a tractor, especially a new tractor, there's a lot of fear. 
a, a lot of uh, just concern that oh, I bought a lemon or this this tractor's right. junk. Right, right, right. Um, uh, an oil leak on a tractor is not a major issue most no. of the time. No, there are so many fittings. Like this has the this machine has the single point attachment option. There's you know there's five places right here that oil could leak, and it could be that when a dealer assembled this, they didn't snug up one of these fittings, so it's just dripping a little bit. So you know on a front end loader, there's all kinds of fittings all over the yeah. thing, uh, T joints where the fluid separates the two cylinders at the cylinders, at the couplers, yeah. at the hard lines to the hoses, and they come loose. Uh, yes. Even if you think they're tight, they, they, right. they come loose and you, you might even see oil spew out while you're using your loader. Don't panic. Right. Just stop it and find which uh, connection right. is loose. Turn the machine off and relieve the pressure by wiggling the joystick. Yeah, yeah. And, and oftentimes, I mean, if, if you've got a leak that's spewing out, uh, it's, it's going to be obviously loose. I mean, yes. it's, it's, yeah. it's really easy to find. Or My point yeah. is, don't panic. Right. You're going to have loose connections. You're going to have oil leaks once in a while. It's not necessarily even something you have to go back to your dealer with, even under warranty. Right. You can find the leak. Great. Right. Um, Grab two wrenches, tighten it up a little bit. And, and move right on. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's... Not all the time, but most of the time. And if you can't find the leak, don't hesitate to go back to your dealer. I'm right. not suggesting that. But uh, it's, it's oftentimes easy to find. And I, I just... I want to relieve concern because folks get really concerned when they see oil dripping sure. under their machine. Sure. Folks, I hope this has helped with some of the basic loader hydraulics questions. If you have others, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. Um, you might also go to tractoruniverse.com. We're introducing a new site today um, where you can ask questions like that. We're going to have this video, how-to videos, basic uh, videos there available. We'll also have some manufacturer news. we got more information on the Summit Hydraulics rear SCV kit there, wow. as well as some accessories that go with it. Ken will be out there occasionally to, uh, to uh, answer some questions and, and help us all, all through that. So tractoruniverse.com for that. Ken, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Tim, for having me. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim.